All right, well, my name is Logan Huskins. I am a software developer here in OKC. I work at Love's Travel Stops. Uh, I primarily write Node.js. I've been doing it for several years now. And we are going to talk today about Node's new Worker Threads API. So Node, as most of you probably know, is good at IO heavy, scalable servers, but it's historically bad at doing like computationally complex things. The event loop, which is Node's, what Node uses for its like async model, is not very good at doing things that require CPU resources effectively. And that's where workers come in. Well, what are workers? Uh, workers are a way to execute code asynchronously on a separate thread. Workers are new to Node as of 10.5 and an experimental flag. So to access these, you have to be on 10.5 or above. I think we're up to 10.9 or 10.10 now. And when you run your application, you, you'll just run node, dash, dash, experimental worker, and then your script. And that's how you get access to that feature. Don't use it in production. It's experimental. It might not work. Um, it's built on the browser's existing message channel API. So they took that from the browser. It's in V8, and they added node's layer on top of it to make it accessible when using Node.js. When to use workers. You want to use workers when you're doing CPU-driven tasks. So generally with Node, uh, when you do, do things that are CPU heavy, you're going to block, if you're writing a web server, you're going to block your web server. So anybody making HTTP requests while you're performing that are going to be just out of luck. So the workers, workers are good for stuff like that. You can pass it off to this worker thread, and then you have a way to do those computationally complex things without stopping all of your other HTTP requests to your server. Uh, so things like math, AI, machine learning, anything that is very CPU heavy, you're, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be wanting to use something like workers for that. And before, you wouldn't do that in Node. You don't wanna use workers for IO tasks. The traditional Node async model using the event loop is gonna be a lot better for that. Uh, the cost of spinning up and spinning down these worker threads is gonna outweigh any performance gain you would get by doing that off on another thread versus using the traditional async that Node provides. Workers are not nodes event, event loop driven async. So like I just mentioned, those are good for IO, IO async. So you have your uh, file operations, networking operations, database calls. Those are gonna use the traditional event loop model. You're not gonna use workers for that. These are, these are for computationally complex things, which event loop is traditionally bad at. They aren't nodes clustering model. So that, uh, the clustering model is a way to have master processes communicate and uh, handle worker processes. So you can basically distribute if you have multiple CPUs in your machine, you can run multiple versions of your server having a master process, basically communicate with all of those and handle spin up and spin down of those. That's for having multiple copies of your web server. That is not for performing specific operations. And it's not the child process model. That's for when you want to execute other scripts in your Node.js application. For instance, if you want to run something, something in Bash from your, from your Node app, you'd use child processes and not this, this worker model. So I have a quick code example. It's kind of, a, kind of a silly example, but I think it'll get the point across pretty well. So what we're gonna do, it's pretty simple. We're just gonna spin up a simple HTTP server. I'm gonna run something that would traditionally block the server. So we can see us trying to make requests to that server and it not being successful. And then I will uncomment the threading part and comment out the blocking part, and we will see it handling that in the background without blocking your web server. So like I said, um, it's the whole module The whole module is going to be called worker threads, but it's got, like anything else in Node, it's got a bunch of different things you can import. I'm going to be using worker, which is the process of spinning up a worker. Is main thread, which gives you, it's just a Boolean to check if you're on the main thread or if you're in a worker thread. And then message channel is going to be how we communicate. So we're going to create this server. I'm going to log out that I'm starting a non-threaded operation, and then I'm going to do this big old nested loop here that will take a lot of time. Actually, it won't take that much time, but it'll take enough time to demonstrate the point and then I'll log that it's ending the operation, and then it will send the response back. So I'm gonna run it, send in two responses, and you'll see it being blocked, and it might be a little fast, so we might not see them actually blocked. Yes, Aaron? Yes, I can, absolutely. Is that better? Okay, I'm gonna make my terminal part a little bit smaller, because that doesn't matter as much. So it's gonna log out that it's starting, it's gonna run the operation, it's gonna log out that it's ending, and then you'll see the request come back. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that. So we're starting it the same way we'd start a normal application, but with that experimental worker, fla worker flag on it down here at the bottom. Server started. I wanna run it in two. I probably, it'll probably get done by the time the first one comes back. Yeah, it's already came back. 
It's sent back hello world. Sent back hello world. So what we'll see is down here, I'm gonna make this bigger again. We started and ended the non-threaded operation and then sent the response. Started and ended the non-threaded operation and sent the response. So it's running, it's running these and then it's blocking even though I'm sending in those requests prior to that response necessarily coming back. So we are going to do this one more time with the worker threads. We're gonna comment all of this out because we don't want that to run this time. And I'm gonna uncomment this. So what we have is we're checking if we're on the main thread. We always will be in this script. How we start the new worker is we create a new, a new worker instance and pass it the directory name of the actual file we wanna spin up in the worker. Create a new channel for communication. Um, basically with these you're gonna communicate across a port. It gives you a port to do that on. We're gonna send a message, or we're gonna listen for a message. When that message happens, we'll log out the message. And what message we're gonna log out is that the operation is complete. And when it first starts, we're gonna send a message across to that worker. So this is kind of what the worker looks like. We imported the, uh, the parent port, which is where the message is coming from, and the message port, which is the actual object it's coming off of. Um, when we receive a message from the parent port, we log that we're starting the threaded operation and that we're ending the threaded operation, and we're doing the nested loop here. And when we're done, we're sending back the operation is done, and we're closing. So let's go ahead and run it. Let's see if I can do this fast. Oh, well, it happens fast enough because we're passing it off to the other thread that it's not waiting for that loop to run anymore. So it's pretty much instantaneous when we do this. And we'll see, I'll make this big again. Server started and it immediately is sending the responses before it even gets to the point of starting that threaded operation. And then down here we have where the operation completed after those responses went back. Now normally you're not gonna have a lot of situations where you're sending off stuff to run nested loops in a background thread before your response gets sent back to the client. Um, but there are situations where if you need something to execute in the background that is really math heavy and you don't want it to block your servers, for instance, you're calculating something and then later you sort in a database or something weird like that, you're doing something like I said, AI or machine learning related, you could do that. You might also not necessarily do this in an HTTP server, but you could do this in a, a script you're running locally if you wanted to pass that data back and forth. Um, you guys have any, anybody have any questions about that? Uh, the question was, would this be a use case for performing some sort of operation, in this case a network operation, where you didn't care about the response, you just wanted to get back to sending the data back to your client and let this execute in the background, is that correct? Okay, uh, no, because the, like I said earlier, the spinning up and spinning down of these worker threads is going to probably take longer than using you know, like traditional event loop async. So you would either do that, and if you didn't care about the response, you could just not wait for a response, you could send it off and then keep chugging along. Or if you wanted to wait for a response, you'd use that event loop async versus doing something like this. This is specifically for doing, doing CPU heavy things because the event loop's not good at that. What other questions do you have? Uh, could you also like send a response back after you've gotten the message and still wait for the operation? Yeah, uh, I have multiple requests. The, oh, and have it respond to multiple requests? Yeah, like concurrent requests, would that still work? Yeah, um, you, I haven't, I haven't attempted that. What the question is, is could I still wait for that response to come back from the thread and send, at that point, send the response back to the client without it blocking? I haven't tried that and I assume you could. Uh, what you get is this callback and instead of just logging out the message, uh, because it has access to the response object, I could just send the response back from there and that's how that would work. I haven't, I haven't actually done that. Um, I haven't had a, a, good, a good solid use case for me to work on this one, like a, a real app where I need to do stuff like that. <laughs> it's mostly been since it's experimental, just kind of experimenting with it. But I assume if you would throw it in that callback, you could, you could then send that response back just fine because it's, it's gonna be asynchronous at that point, so you won't have an issue. The question is, is there any path for this to be pushed out of experimental and pushed into the main node project? I don't know how their uh, process works for that. I know this is actually in the main node documentation right now. It's not something that's hidden away somewhere, so it's in the actual API docs for node, so I would assume at some point it will be brought in. There is a GitHub 
issue open where the initial, or GitHub pull request open where the initial discussion happened and the discussion's still ongoing there, I would check on that if you were curious to see progress on it. So that, no problem. What other questions do we have? That is a good question, and I don't know the answer to that. Um, you're given access to two ports on the worker, port one and port, port two, so my assumption is that they're gonna be unidirectional, and you just you use one for one direction, one for the other direction, but I actually don't know that for certain. Any other questions? All right, thank you all very much.